Hey everyone, this is uh, Andy from Finding Value Finance. I've got Casper with us from Uslink. I think that's, uh, what's your YouTube channel? It's Uslink or at Uslink. Uslink. Uh, Uslink. At Uslink uh, INV. At INV. Uslink INV, yeah. if you are interested in checking out his YouTube channel. Uh, wanted to bring him on, uh, talk a little bit about commodities. Obviously, we're all interested in commodities. Uh, he's seeing some things in the charts where he wanted to get on and show everybody. So exactly. I'm also interested to see what he's seeing. So Casper, you know, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. And, oh, that's Chick-fil-A. They always say my pleasure. Oh, they do? <laughs> they do. Okay. They do. Over here in America, I don't think you guys have them over there. But No, I don't think so. So what what are you seeing in the charts? Where What's getting you excited? What breakouts? Just, you know, what are you seeing? Yeah, I'm seeing some overall ETFs mostly. I think, uh, as many of you know, I'm very interested in uranium. Looks very, mm -hmm. very good at uh, at the current state. Also, lithium, uh, nat gas is doing doing some some um, fine things as well. And then I think you know where uh, the overall energy sector XOP uh, and also the banking sector doesn't look good at all. But I can show that <clears throat> I can show that you that uh, later on. Uh, yeah, so just some overall. Um, Big squeezes on, on many big ETFs, and uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, what I see. Yeah, and even even with the ETFs going up, I mean, that will transfer over to the individual companies because the individual companies make up those ETFs. So I know some people sometimes ask, well, what about the individual companies? The individual companies were using the ETFs as a representation of those sectors. So if you see XOP, if you see REMX or or lithium or whatever it is, we're using those ETFs as a representation of the sector. And we, we or whomever believes uh, that the, that, that sector looks very good. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, I know a lot of people are like, well, what about this individual, this one individual company? It's like hey, the ETFs taken off. It should include the majority of those sectors. So what are you seeing? What, what exactly are you seeing? What's getting excited? Um, what are you seeing in the charts specifically? Well, let me uh, share the screen very quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we will start off with my favorite, which is uranium. Um, for the past 18 months or so, we have been in a in a consolidation downtrend or sideways to down. And uh, it all it all came with uh, after a big move up from, um, from the COVID lows, right? A big move up here, which was very exciting to be a part of. Uh, I didn't cast the lows. I know many did, but I bought, you know, late 2020. Mm -hmm. And uh, ever since, it's just been sideways uh, consolidation. And what you can see right now, this is the weekly. So this is a very long-term um, chart. And you can see right now that actually, let me zoom in here a bit, that we have the three highs here. And last week, we finally broke out to the upside, which is very encouraging. Uh, and that's exactly what you want to see. And we can go so, quickly to the daily as well. Yeah. So I know we, we always talk very easily like, oh, it's a breakout. What exactly does a breakout mean? Because I know a lot of people, they may not know what that means. What does it mean to break that downtrend line? What what what, what exactly does that mean in technical analysis? I can show you just back to the weekly here. What you often see, right? The, um, nothing goes in a straight line. So for example, what you often see is, in this case, as mentioned before, we had a big rally up from the COVID lows. And what you typically see at that point, at, or at some point, you will get some sort of, of pause or a big pullback. And and what you then want to, to, to look for is when does the the momentum is up. So you want to find a, a level or a trend line where it breaks uh, multiple highs. In this case, you have the three down. And often when you get that break of that line or shunt, it could be skewed downwards, which you often see. That's often a sign of you get momentum uh, f back into the upside again. Um, so it is a, a pause before continuation, and you want to look for where where on uh, where in the structure do you have the break that you can say, all right, this is now a uh, a resumption to the upside or the downside, depending on which way you go. So it's a it's a momentum look. Uh, you, you're looking for where momentum is coming back into the sector after a a, a pause or a period of. Uh, of consolidation. That's my take on it. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah. So let me just get quickly into the daily again. Zooming in here, it's a bit more. Uh, yeah, this is the daily. You can see 
we have the breakout here. And I have been talking for a long time that the 22 was a minor, big level, um, together with the golden trend line coming down here. So we have the breakout. And as you know, breakout often leads to a retest of that level, just to confirm that this level is, uh, um, is uh, it, it's confirmed that it, this is um, now support. And now we are going back up again. And uh, and yeah, so what we're looking for right now in the URA is a takeout of the previous breakout high, retest. That's what we're looking for. So for now, it looks technically, uh, yeah, like taking out of a of a book. It's uh, it's it's very good. Now, what level would you say that we need to break uh, on this chart to basically say we are in a new uptrend? Where, yeah, where would I think. You... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, I think this is the the baby steps. We have to break out, but I th still think if you look from the a bearish side of, of this chart, you can see we have the big head and shoulders coming here, right there. And to me, to really confirm and to negate this overall structure for URA is to get above the, roughly the 24. That's my, you can see the red lines here. I'm just gonna go back here, sorry. You can see the red lines that I have here, basically connecting both shoulders, you have the left shoulder over here and the right shoulder over here. So 24, give or take, in my view, will negate this overall bearish pattern. And to me, that's where we just really start to kick uh, to kick things in, in, in gear for uranium. Yeah, I, I actually think that looks really good. I, yeah, I yeah, it would, does. I, does. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not in the bearish camp. I know some people were putting the the shoulders, I said, eh, maybe it gives you one false breakout before this thing goes, but it doesn't necessarily have to. And it looks like we got no. the dead, I call it the dead period where we get the buying selling pressure equal. We got a big fat green candlestick. Uh, this is on the weeklies, I think. Yeah, this and is weekly, yeah. we're starting to get good momentum. So I, I think this is this we, we talked about a little bit before. This could be the beginning of the big move, right? Yeah, this could be the beginning of uh, of like number three up. And typically what you see is you have. You have three legs up um, for the entire move. And I think clearing 24 for URA will be leg number three, which is typically one of the the longest one of uh, of the three. Sometimes it's number five as well, but yeah. Um, but this is a good one if you can clear 24, that's for sure. Yeah, and I know a lot of people always ask the time frame, and I, I usually don't really care about time frames as much, but... Um... Is there anything that you like your expectations on time frame? I know it's a tough question because I don't yeah. like asking about time. But it, what what's your kind of opinions around that? Not that they're, you know, almighty. You think it's going to do it this year, or do you think it's going to rip like real soon? Uh, I know a lot of people they, they ask those questions, and I, I know it's real hard for any of us to really answer because I kind of just ride it and we look at price levels. But what, what's your take on it? I think I do think that we we could get the breakout in, in over the summer, so like in four eight weeks. But also, I think if you look at the Nasdaq uh, and the SP five five hundred, I think they are right now at very high levels. If you look at the chart, so I think if we get a pullback, I think we will at some point get a pullback, maybe a ten percent pullback in in those uh, big uh, ETFs. I think you, it it could delay this because if you get some some very bad uh, red days. In the Nasdaq, for example, I mean, it it would be very hard for uranium to to start uh, doing massive breakouts. So I think that could delay it a bit. But I think within this year, for sure, we should uh, we should have the breakout above 20, uh, 24. Um, and yeah, eight mm -hmm. eight four to eight weeks is my is my guess. So in, in, if I would have to give a number, so yeah, and our so how can I say this? Is there anything that we can gather from this chart on the potential size of the move of wave three? Yeah, I mean, there definitely is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and what does that look like to you? If I were to do it, which this is the technique that I use the most actually, is to do a Fibonacci extension to see where we could potentially go. Mm -hmm. And remember, this is on a log scale. I, I'm starting to use log scale for most of my charts because I find that it has a lot of benefits when looking at the long-term picture uh, compared to a nominal scale. But mm -hmm. if we were to do a, a quick Fibonacci retrace uh, extension, we are going from the COVID lows to the peak 
and to the to the low of this move or this consolidation down. Um, so on a log scale, uh, the move is actually all up here at around uh, eighty three, roughly. So we that's are getting one close to, one, to right. Yeah, that's one. Yeah, that's the one hundred percent move. Yes, that's true. Yep. That's true. If we were to get that move, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so we are getting close. If we get the full like three up here to like yeah, roughly uh, eighty, we are getting close to to the uh, Fukushima gap here, as you can see, which will be a big resistance, obviously. But I think this uh, this gap here has a magnet for the next two three years, maybe four years, uh, mm -hmm. for sure. I, I've seen a lot of uh, moves that happen that go above 2.6, between 2 point, what was it, 2.6 some, what, what's the next fib up there? Yeah, that's the- uh, 2.618 all the way to 3.618. I see a lot of moves go between those two uh, fib, Fibonacci levels. Where, where are those levels at? Now that, oh my goodness! They, they, they are pretty high up. I think. I think if if, if we were to get a, some sort of blow off top in the in wave five, I would say mm -hmm. you will get it between the uh, one point six and two point six. That would be my take on things. Okay. But even though if we get there, that's like it sounds ridiculous now, but that's four hundred uh, dollars for this ETF. So we are. So that's a that's a that's a that's a twenty like a twenty bagger almost. Right? Yeah. If we were to get it, but you will not. It will take some time. You'll get it maybe later. Uh, yeah, in this in this decade, uh, and things needs to line up pretty well to do that. But I think um, there are some chances. You you can see the uh, uh, this move actually also if you look at the gold to silver ratio during uh, from two thousand and eight to two thousand and eleven. I think it did that move as well between the one point mm -hmm. six and two point six. So it can happen when you get parabolic. Um, I think we have to we have to look at that when we get there if we can potentially get a a big move. I think the the first step is to get close to the Fukushima gap, and from there we can see we can see what will what will happen. So yeah, so the way that I always evaluate things, and I don't know, I'd love to get your opinion on it as well. Um, I don't necessarily focus so much on the timing of it because it's like yeah, it's going to happen over the next three, four, five years, whatever it is. I usually focus on the potential, and yeah. <clears throat> when, when when I look at that. Um, do you, I mean, when you look at all these different charts, we've put in wave one, we've got the consolidation here. Uh, is this one of the larger fractals that you've seen in the markets is, do you think uranium is one of the best potentials that you've seen by looking at a lot of the charts that you look at? Yeah, definitely. I think it's one of the better ones. Uh, I might be biased a bit here because I'm very, uh, bullish on, on uranium. So, so keep that in mind, but I think it just, from a technical point of view, it looks uh, you, you often do, do, don't get it this this good. I mean, it's very good. What I would have, uh, if it were to give, to be uh, to be uh, to be really good, that this is the URNM, it would be to have had a a third move lower. So we have three moves down. That would be technically perfection, uh, because you often see these three moves down here when you get the consolidation. So if we were to have a, I wouldn't say a ten out of ten, but a better setup would be to have actually have had a lower low here. And then we could move higher, but do you, do you think that low could still happen? I I think it, it of course it can. Everything can happen, but I think we would have had the the uh, the move here because this. Let me go to the excuse me to the daily here. Mm -hmm. This was a bear flag, which I were watching for a very long period of time, which has been negated for now at least. So, if we were to have had. Uh, have had this move down in, in this region, I think it would be the break of this bear flag here at some point. So I, I think it would have happened already if uh, if that were the case, but uh, it, it can still happen, of course. We haven't broken out on the URNM, which is the 100% pure play uranium. So in that case, we haven't broken out yet compared to the URA, which is, I think, mm -hmm. 70 or 75 or something percent uranium. So. And then what about um, what about the fit physical commodity? I mean, that's been kind of just chugging higher, right? I mean, it's been. Yeah. <clears throat> this is the I can find the let, let me find the uh, the physical commodity. Or Somewhere or you can here. do the scrap physical uranium trust. Okay. That's fine too. Okay. okay. <clears throat> no big deal. But actually, this one I also covered <clears throat> big time on on Twitter and YouTube, which mm -hmm. is actually on technical perspective is just it's just amazing to see how you know the support and resistance just was uh 
was respected in this chart here. Let me zoom, let me just capture it for you guys here. Okay, so in this case, I had two major resistance lines. The red one, which is the high, coming down here, as you can see. Also, there were a double golden resistance here coming across. And what you can see, let me zoom in here to the daily, is that we we broke out of the red one right here. And then actually also we took out the golden and then we came all the way back for the retest as we are often looking for. And now we are resuming higher again. So right now, the, the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust from a technical perspective looks absolutely amazing with further upside as long as we can stay above these two here. Uh, but given the technicals and how it, it, it the the price action, it looks it looks like uh, like we want to go higher. That's for sure. It uh, you can see here how they are respected all the way. Let me zoom in. So to, to me, this brings me joy. Right, we get the perfect back test uh, resumption, and then, then we're testing the golden, double golden, and hopefully we go higher from here. Looks really good. It really does. Yeah, the candlesticks look, look clean and nice too. You know, yeah, exactly. It doesn't look. It looks like it wants to go higher, not lower. Yeah, and also we have a a decent weekly candle here, closing at the middle. I would prefer to be higher, but still we are yeah. above every major resistance we are currently above, and the path of least resistance is is up for sure, no doubt about it. Well, that's good. So, so um, yeah. you, a lot of people always ask when moon. So, uh, <laughs> this, I think this is the setup, right? I mean. It, it is. It is. And so basically what could potentially happen, and I'll, maybe we'll just recap it here in Uranium, is we're seeing a break on URA. We're seeing a break on the Sprout Physical Uranium Trust. We're seeing a potential break on URNM. Uh, across the board, it, everything looks solid. It looks good. It We've does. broken out in a lot of them. We've, we're, we're hanging out on top of the patterns. Uh, we've got gold that's also, I know I'm just tying this into, we've got gold that's sitting on top of its pattern. Uh, we know gold's kind of our leader and these guys usually follow. So it's it's all kind of interconnected. Do, I mean, could this be the the lake three that we're looking for, the, the big massive move? And, I, think, I think, yeah. And, and what could stop it? I mean, is there anything here that could stop this thing? Yeah, I think this is leg number three. And if there are things that could stop it, of course, I mean, as mentioned, if we get some major, let me just show you actually. Mm -hmm. It wasn't in the plan, but it doesn't matter. Just look at this move here on the daily for, this is the the NASDAQ, right? I mean, this move right here that you're getting here is parabolic, you know, um, and it's not sustainable. I don't, I'm not saying that we're gonna crash all the way down, you know, to no new lows, but I think I wouldn't be surprised if we are testing again, this big level here. Uh, so we could come down here all the way before resuming higher eventually, if if that is uh, what you believe in. But I, I think there are a pullback coming for the overall markets, which obviously also will have, have impact on on uranium for sure. So that could delay it or, or could uh, could stop it definitely, depending on how deep we go. Um, so yeah. And then of course there is always the big one, you know, a big nuclear accident at a, at a power plant. That would set us uh, ten years back, maybe like Fukushima. So, that. But again, the probabilities of that happening is just, yeah. You shouldn't worry about it because if you were about, you know, such a thing that can happen, like like a nuclear power plant meltdown, then you shouldn't invest at all because then you're worrying too much about things that happened, uh, like one in a million, right? So, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter in my view. Okay. Uh, is there any any closing statements or anything you'd like to add with the uranium sector since we're on it? No, I mean just for now at least it looks very good. Um, mm -hmm. Until proven otherwise, that's my my a statement that I use a lot. You know, this looks insanely good until proven otherwise. So for now, I'm I'm all bullish on uranium for the for the short term and longer term right now. Um, th there's no denying that it's been 18 long months I think for this consolidation and many people have. Uh, have left the boat, I would say, because they have, were very frustrated uh, in that period. Because 18 months for many people is just, I can't wait, it's, just, it's too long, but, but you know, it's just all part of, a, all part of the investment uh, cycle, you can say. Yeah, if anybody wants to offload some shares for cheap, I'll take them. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. an offer. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what about so let's stick with the energy energy uh, group. We've got uranium that looks fantastic. What about the other one? Because I know sometimes we link up. Sometimes they're somewhat correlated. How does uh, you know energy like oil, natural gas? How do they look, and how are they performing? And um, do they complement the charts that we've got in the uranium sector? Yeah. Just before we go there, I'd like to show you lithium. Actually, it looks very okay. similar, but this is just also a godly setup, if you were to ask me. So lithium had a big move up again from the mm -hmm. COVID crash all the way to to roughly 2022. And just look where we are right now. This is quite similar. Um, one big bullish flag or pennant, however you want to call it. So lithium to me is also a play that you shouldn't underestimate if we can get a breakout here, which it looks like we will in, in the next week or two. So lithium. Yeah, so that's quote getting lit, right? You want to get yeah, lit? Yeah, it is. It's, it's going to get lit. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> so so uh, um, going off this, what is the projected move for lithium look like to the upside? Because that looks massive. Yeah, it does. It, it's just, and remember, this is on a log scale, right? So you can see the, yeah, that the, looks the, it's just, you can do the exact same thing again from the lows to the highest to the lowest point of, of the pullback. Mm -hmm. So again, if this were, this is on a log scale, so this is a maximum projection. If you were to go on a, on a nominal scale, you get lower numbers, but yep. I use log scale, so because that's mm -hmm. my favorite right now. And uh, as you can see, right, we are currently at roughly 66 ish, mm -hmm. and the move will be like uh, 400 and and 50% more or less, so a 4.5x. But that would take us okay. to roughly, let, let's call it 300 just to, to keep the numbers easy. So that's a big move. That's a very, very big move. Yep. Looks good. It really does. So, and, it, and remember, just like uranium, lithium is a very tiny sector. So, it, I mean, uh, you don't need much money getting into that sector to really get things going. So, and quickly. That's also goes yeah, to the downside as well. So, I've seen some individual stocks that look pretty good uh, in the lithium space. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So lithium, I mean, look out. Um, if you haven't heard of it, just look, dig into it because it can really make some big moves here in the next eighteen months uh, if everything plays out uh, yeah. according to this this pattern here. So, okay, let's just look at other energies. Let's take uh, yeah. oil for example. Uh, let me do it like this. Okay, so this is my view on oil right now. We are still in a in a parallel downtrend, as you can see here, coming down. Um, mm -hmm. We still are, but I think the level to watch for me is the golden trend line here, which is roughly right now just uh, 65, more or less. Um, so I think we need, in order to get some momentum, we need to to get above. Let, let me go to the daily. Actually, it might be better for you guys. This is the downtrend here. So what you really, what I'm looking at is to get above these size here in the short term, just to get some momentum to the upside. So roughly um, 75 more or less. I would love to get us above 75 and stay there for some time because in the short term that would would uh, would uh, stop the pressure downwards at least. Then we have something something to work on. But I think overall uh, oil will go higher. I don't think it will. Not this year. I don't think we'll have a massive move up. Uh, to me, it's not in the cards. But I think if we can start to grind out these three levels that we have here, especially the 82, which I have been saying for a long time is a very big level to get above. So I think if we can clear 82 this year, then we have a very bullish case for for oil. Um, and obviously, let's go to the weekly again. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Obviously, taking out the golden support here all the way across. I mean, that would, in my view, I think we'll get a spike down. And then I think that's whether it will be, will be placed at around, call it 50, whatever, in that range. Mm -hmm. So I don't un underestimate then, I mean, Yeah, go ahead. go ahead. And then when this move completes, whether it spikes down or goes up or sideways, uh, where do you think oil ultimately ends up going based off of the patterns that we've created already? Let me think here. On a much longer time frame. Yeah, then we need to go to the monthly. I think, again, mm -hmm. lock scale monthly. I think we have showed this one before. And I know many people say this will never happen. But I'm just looking at the chart to say w w what could happen. And we have mm -hmm. this long-term parallel. Let me see if I can find it here for you guys. Yep, there it is, more or less. 
as you can see, we have we have the COVID spike low that should be negated, of course, because that's where it, it all went negative. But we have this long term. As you can see right there, it's beautiful connected. A long term parallel channel here, all the way. You can see it here. So if we were to get a, a visit to the upside here again in like let's let's call it ten years, then we, you will see. I know it sounds crazy, roughly four hundred dollar oil. And it's all based on on the pattern. I'm not saying how and why. It just that could be the potential. So, and how it gets there, I don't know. What will happen in the world, I don't know. But that's just you kind of stuttered when you said four hundred dollar oil, like it was a kind of disbelieving yeah, because, it. Yeah, because for <laughs> as an as an investor, it's very good, right? We can make money. But overall, in the world, that's uh, that's gonna that's gonna spell trouble uh, in many areas of the world. So that's not that's not so good if you get like. Yeah, four hundred dollar oil. That would be. So when I'm looking at this chart, last bull market started. I'm just going to say ninety nine or so, ninety eight, yeah. ninety nine. Um, that's when we started to come up, and then we pulled back. So that like wave one, pull back. Wave three, pull back. And we had wave five, kind of yeah, move up yeah. and touch the top there. Do you think something almost to the same extent is going to occur coming up, going to the far? Can, can you do a bars pattern and like copy that pattern? And see yeah, how I can it do that. overlays just to see yeah. if it were like the if you know how to do that. I don't know. Yes, 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 yes. I can okay. just need to yeah. yes. Uh the scale has just went off a bit. Uh like that. Okay, yeah. So okay. Yeah, we can take the bar the bars pattern, which is actually a very nice tool if you want to see if you can find a fractal. Yeah. So you just take yeah. uh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, go for it. I think yeah, it's so gonna have... push us, it's gonna it's gonna push us above that top line there. Yeah, it could very well, very well be. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, oh man, it's, uh, it's real close. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'll, I'll take it. I, I, it's. It's not. It's okay. It's okay. Where does it but say the bottom is on that fractal there, roughly? Yeah, fifty-five. As, as we bucks. talked about. Yeah, fifty-five. Yep. Yeah, as we talked about the spike low. So yep. it's in the cards as well to get the spike low here, um, mm -hmm. below the uh, the neckline, and then we'll go in for the the typical back test, and then it it will break at some point, according to this fractal. So. Yeah, so yeah long term. I, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, when I run that same type of analysis, it puts yeah, see where the top is. It puts me up around the top of that thing, five hundred, yeah. six hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's in like ten years time, and and yep, but still, it's out there. Mm -hmm. But I think I think you know people and politicians, of course, underestimate how much oil we actually still need in this world. Even though everyone wants to go green, electric. I mean, we mm -hmm. will need oil for the next, I don't know, fifty years easily. Um, oh, because yeah. because we have we have been related on uh, or dependent on on oil for so such a long time, and the politicians wants to to cut it off in like fifty uh, in like fifteen years or twenty years. You, you can't do that. It takes way longer. So, mm -hmm. and I, I think you know, uh, isn't it the Americans or US? They are not drilling anymore, right? Is that true? Or I can't remember exactly. Oh no, we're we're still gonna drill. Okay. Okay. But yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna be drilling the shale, and we'll be drilling all over the place. Just wait until they reverse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. Exactly. Okay. So yeah, oil midterm, short term, this year maybe you get. It it doesn't look that good, but long term, I think it's uh It's a good place to be if you want to yep. invest. So. So if you're an investor, I'm I'm just gonna state this to everyone. You actually want to be looking at things that don't look good. Uh, you want them to kind of look kind of crappy and then you want it to like break down. Everybody gets scared. The fear kicks all the way up. Uh, that's generally the best time to buy. Exactly. Uh, it's when exactly. everybody's the most fearful. That's how I made all my money in uh, 2020 and all these other time frames. So if you see that big fear event, um, just do the opposite of everyone else. If all the people and all the pundits are saying oil just crashed to 50 something dollars a barrel, uh, then you're like, all right, I'll pick up some shares. <laughs> exactly. Just sit on it for a long time. Yeah. And you can reverse that right now to the NASDAQ. Everyone is bullish, right? AI, this yep. and that, NVIDIA, whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm having a hard time to find a bear right now on Twitter. So I'm not saying that we're going to crash. Yeah, this guy, <laughs> exactly. And me, <laughs> but, the, but I think we will have a pullback right now because as we just saw before, I mean, it's – I'm not saying that we will have it tomorrow, on Monday, but in a, in a very short period of time, we should have the pullback because – 
the chart is just so extended. Um, so yeah. So yeah, obviously, do the do the opposite of what the crowd is doing will will do, will serve you very well in in investing. Yeah. So in in the in the chart porn world, we'll call it over here. <laughs> um, we see that that orange or gold line going across. That that's a trend line that we've broken out. We've broken out. We're doing a retest of that trend line. It doesn't mean that we'll stop at the trend line. It can obviously do a false breakdown and then slingshot its way on up. But yes. uh, that there is like, I don't know if you can get really that much of a better setup in a lot of these with commodities. Commodities are all basically setting up for some gigantic move that's coming in the future. Oh, yes. Um, and sure. oil is part of that. They all look good. Lithium, like you just showed us. Uh, looking very good. And that's got the same type of pattern too. It's the big wave one and then the wave two pullback. And then we'll see what wave three looks like. Yeah, true. Yep. So, yeah. So, so what about like um, natural gas? What do we Let's got there? That. My, natural uh, gas. My, it, they call it the widow maker. I call it the money maker. So. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, I, I found the money maker. <laughs> uh, well, if you get it right, it's the money maker. This is the one that uh, it's like it, it uranium. Yeah. Uranium and nat gas are the two uh, the big movers. Just put it that way yeah. in short time periods. But that nat gas is a lot more tricky to to time because it's very spiky. So, but mm -hmm. but I, I agree. I've seen someone else is joining here. I don't know. Okay, but uh... okay. Let me just uh, let me just size it up for you guys okay so this is the dutch natural gas and uh, again this is log scale and we have had a big breakout this week actually ever since the peak in in uh, in the middle of 2022 so that's nothing much to say actually other than we have a big breakout in this wedge here it will not skyrocket here as you saw before but we this is to me putting in a bottom of some kind um, but again short term this is really good, as you can see. Yeah, it's TTF. Yeah, the TTF, yes. The Dutch and and so. we've also seen Henry Hub go up too. Do you think TTF is having an impact on Henry Hub? Oh, yes, for sure. Because mm -hmm. uh, I think in the last week, we had a 40% increase in the uh, in the TTF, the Dutch one. Yeah, and huge. It, it will scare, you know, the, the American market for sure. Uh, of course it will. And you can also see, actually, that we have broken a a structure that we have been building for the uh, for the entire 2023 more or less right we have this pattern here and uh, we have uh, peaked out to the upside so my take is that we will get all the way up to this pivot low here so roughly let's call it 3.5 more or less which is a double resistance as you can see we have we have this one here mm -hmm. here and then it intersects right here both of them so that's my take on it you know for for the remaining of, of this summer actually that we will see a what is it like a thirty something percent move? Mm -hmm. just what about um, looking at ninety eight to two thousand eight or so? There's a fractal back there that's the same that we're doing today. I wonder if that move that you're projecting here is the same as that fractal uh, from nineteen ninety eight all the way to two thousand eight. It's that big first move and then the pullback. Yeah. It's probably going to be something similar to that. I think it comes up and comes back down. Yeah, we have it here. Yes. I think we talked about yep. it uh, in like a video too before uh, as well. So mm -hmm. this is the big move. Um, and as, as you can see, you know, uh, if you want to invest in that gas, I mean, uh, as a trader, it's just, it's perfect because it, very, it, it is very volatile. But uh, if we were to get the exact same move again, we have, you know, at least two more highs to put in at some point yeah. here in time. So... Yep. And also, let me just get rid of all these doodles. And uh, also, we have some sort of, let me just see if I can find it for you guys here. Uh, there it is. Just going to sketch it quickly here. We have some sort of, oh, that's actually quite good. Um, <laughs> good work there. <laughs> First I'm shot. Surprised. Yeah. We have this uh, arc, as you can see. So mm -hmm. um, going into the next 10 years. Uh, so it, it could be something, you know, very spiky as we just saw before right um mm -hmm. so we have the two spikes here and then maybe a higher spike but 
but to me the the arc is valid for sure as you can see it's connecting all uh, connecting all the way so so yeah let's let's do this thing let's get yeah, natural energy. gas and uranium going yeah <laughs> also I, I'm, I don't watch the news that much but any a lot of people is talking about lower gas prices lower inflation lower this and that you know and uh, oil is going down and that's exactly where you want to say all right everyone is talking about you know everything is going down that means that we are very close to the bottom not the bottom but we are way close to the bottom compared to <laughs> to right. to the top for sure so just go against the herd you will do insanely good in investing but you will make uh, people will make fun, fun of you when you say i am bullish or bearish or oil when everyone is on the op on the opposite side but that's when you know that you are probably correct so